In the previous video, we covered the topic of correlation analysis as well as feature selection. We've done some exploratory data analysis of the Boston housing data. Having an understanding of it now, now we can actually move into the simple linear regression modeling of the Boston housing data. That's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Just walk back a little bit. Uh, we looked at the so-called correlation analysis one of the variable that we decided to use to model uh, as an explanatory variable for the medium housing value is the number of room uh, on the dwelling itself. Since this actually has the highest correlation uh, with uh, the medium housing value, I'm just going to say housing value from now on, uh, we're going to use that to model uh, the actual house price. Since we're doing only just a linear regression and univariate one at that, univariate basically means that we're only using one uh, explanatory variable to explain the house price. Um, so we're gonna keep things really keep things really simple. In the futures, we will in the future videos we are going to go into multiple linear regression. So this is just really a simple one to start off with. Okay, here we have our um, let me just uh, again just show you this just so that you actually have some perspective. We are using the room, the number of room per dwelling. Okay, so uh, in the data frame itself, so to select uh, that column, we just DF bracket uh, RM and we're just going to use the values and we do need to reshape this in the format uh, that psychic learn can understand which is in the ma format of matrix although this is just one column we do need to reshape it to that format okay store that in capital x and for small y which is the uh, target variable that we are trying to model here which is this last one here so we're just going to dot values and store it in small y Okay, remember the five steps uh, that we mentioned in our uh, lesson. So let me just uh, re refresh your memory on this. The five steps were choose a model. Having chosen the model that we, you want to use, in our case, linear regression, then you choose the model hyperparameters. Um, the third step is to arrange your data into the features matrix and target vector, which we've done already. The fourth is to fit the model, and the fifth and final step is to predict the label. In this case, we are not going to perform the prediction, but we will do the uh, conduct the actual model fitting itself. So from scikit-learn, uh, the linear model, we import linear regression, and we instantiate the model itself and fit the model uh, of uh, x being our room number, number of room per dwelling, uh, and also the so-called medium house value. So having fit that successfully, this is what it returns. Uh, looking at the coefficient as well as the intercept, you'll notice that it's a positive slope and it's a negative intercept. Right, having done all that, let's uh, visualize this a little bit uh, just to see what it actually um, what our model looks like. So I'm just using the um, Seaborn, which is why the SN has here, uh, reg regression plot of uh, X and Y, which is what we provided, and X label being the average number of rooms per dwelling, Y label being the medium value of owner-occupied home in the 100,000s. So as you can see here, as the number of room per dwelling increases, the median value of the only occupied home also increases. As for y, is the intercept at negative? Um, does that make sense? It probably doesn't make any sense, but at the same time, it doesn't make any sense to actually have any property uh, with zero room either. Uh, notice that we don't really have much in the way of data that's uh, at, at the lower less than four room. You have uh, this is likely to be probably three. This is probably one room or two rooms. And notice that it actually, uh, instead of following the slope happily, it actually picks up. 
This is one of the telltale signs to tell you uh, in the modeling uh, of your data, um, the, there is a specific range uh, where your model will work. In this case, having only two dots here, obviously, um, it's not very useful in training your data. That's the first thing. Second thing here, it probably highlights the fact that as soon as you go down to four point something uh, average number of rooms per dwelling, this portion here seems to indicate to you that your model doesn't work very well. There are a couple other things that really is quite striking. Notice that the price actually seems to be stuck at half a million. There is an explanation for that. Um, although the data set doesn't actually explain it, it's very likely that the price has been kept at 500,000. So that is also another telltale sign that there's some problem with this data set that you need to bear in mind. Obviously, this will actually skew your data set and also uh, make your model uh, somewhat inaccurate. What you do not know is that whether these are in the 600,000, 700,000 or even million. With that, it will definitely shift uh, the slope of your um, of the slope itself. And notice that there's also an outlier here. These are things that um, pays to actually study uh, to find out what is actually going on. Uh, because it's going to have an impact on the model itself. If that happens to be, uh, let's just say, not recorded correctly, you might want to drop that because, again, this this one outlier here is really quite massively different from the rest. With our projector, it should be around 450,000 or maybe close of half a mil. But in this case, it's actually around 210,000, 220,000. That's probably something to pay attention to. Uh, it could also be other uh, factor that we didn't take into account of. Um, so we shall leave that. So let's just do a join plot as well and see what it looks like. Having the join plot is very similar to that, except that it actually shows you the distribution itself. Notice that we actually have quite a high distribution of the house. Sorry. Uh, now this is the median value. Okay, the axis has been flipped. Uh, just be mindful of that. So the y axis now, sorry, the x axis now is the median value. The room number now is in the y axis. Uh, looking at this, um, what you can see, yeah, we probably should flip the other way around just for consistency. MADDV. Otherwise, I will get confused. You will get confused as well. I'll say, so, all right, that's better. Now that we actually have it in a much more consistent format, the room number on average around six to seven rooms. And um, yeah, we don't really have much in the way of data here. But the median value, as we observed earlier, there's actually quite a high distribution of it uh, that is actually um, concentrated at half a million. And uh, that's something probably to pay attention to. We already know that the Pearson is 0.7 as we um, did the correlation analysis before and p-value is at the power of 10 to the power of minus 74 so it is very significant uh, looking at that. Okay, so that's really how you um, perform model fitting um, using the uh, Psychic Learn library, Python library. And uh, that's really the lesson here on how to make use of the Psychic Learn library to perform your modeling using a single variable or univariate linear regression. Uh, what, would I would like, what I would like you to do uh, now is to perform your own analysis. Um, this time around, instead of using the room number, it will be really, really interesting uh, to look at the L stat. This is the percentage of lower um, status of the population that will be really interesting to understand um, you know because this is in the negative they are inversely correlated so it pays to actually study that and you know look at how it actually perform and see if the modeling can work well so i'm going to give that to you as a task and i'm going to step away and um, you can pause the video and I will perform the same exercise too so that you can actually see my result um, so that you can actually compare and contrast. So do pause the video now and I'll see you a little bit later.
Okay, welcome back. I've uh, performed the analysis. I hope you have found, you've done likewise, so that you actually have uh, some exercise and exercise to actually, you know, get yourself comfortable with the Cyclone library and also how to actually walk through the five step. Uh, at the very least, work through the four steps. Uh, looking at this, um, what do we have? Elstad, remember, is the lowest percentage of lower status and you have the housing value is what we actually trying to model here. So as notice that as the percentage of the lower status of the population um, decreases, uh, the house price goes up. As the percentage of the lower status of the population increases, the house prices goes down. Um, there are a couple of things that actually, if you really study this, uh, there's a little bit of a uh, worrying sign and something that should bug you. Uh, there's actually a lot of concentration of a capping uh, of uh, half a million. And it doesn't seem to be very linear as well. It seems like that the as the percentage goes down, the curve seems to be parabolic. And as the lower status of the population increases in terms of percentage, it also seems to taper off. It doesn't seem to follow the straight line downward. There's no data observed down at this portion. It just seems like the uh, the price come to this point around uh, around 100, 150,000, and it just level off at that point. And this is where you'll find that your data is telling you uh, that linear regression is not really a good tool uh, to model this. Uh, nevertheless, it's a good exercise and um, it, it pays to actually study your individual features and understand how it actually interacts with your target variable. And again, if we look at the same um, slightly different plot, but on the same variable, you have the um, again, the lower proportion as well as the uh, median uh, price value and again you look at the distribution itself um, and basically you can observe the same thing but the p-value is just as high 10 to the power minus 88 again is significant but the again if once you now that we have zoomed the actual scale out it just looks like that there is definitely a non-linear relationship here so I hope uh, this lesson has been extremely useful for you uh, in this lesson, what we have covered really is the Psychic Learn uh, library itself, how to fit it. Of course, we cover other uh, really important things too, is that uh, observe, um, pay attention to your own data and look for something that uh, gives you the warning sign, uh, such as the capping of data, lack of observation, uh, non-linearity uh, linear, of your data itself, and uh, yeah, so uh, I hope you have found it useful. And that's pretty much the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to go into a slightly different regression and move away from linear regression. Now we're going to move into robust regression uh, and see how that will you know, improve our modeling effort. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.